Joining us now is Carmen Gentile. He's an American journalist, author, and founder of Post Industrial Media. Carmen, thank you so much for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Uh, let's start with the big speech from Vladimir Putin yesterday. He claimed 15% of Ukraine as now part of Russia. This, of course, after Moscow held what critics are calling sham referendums. The head of NATO calling Russia's most recent actions the most serious escalation of the war since it started. Putin also, of course, upping his nuclear rhetoric recently. So are we really at a point where it's not a matter of if, but when NATO countries are drawn into this conflict? I think what we're looking at right now is a 2022 version of what the 2003 mission accomplished uh, a declaration was when George Bush arrived on the aircraft carrier after the initial invasion of Iraq, when we thought that everything was sewn up. The difference now being that this is the post-truth version of that. It's as though he's trying to sell, Putin is trying to sell this notion that not only the that these uh, four provinces are under Russian control, but the people who live there want to be under that control. When just today we've discovered that that another key city in that same province had been evacuated by Russian forces and recaptured by the Ukrainians. So will, you, will NATO be drawn into this conflict? At, the very, at this moment, no, I don't see that happening. But if he does it continue to escalate with attacks, or if any attack were to destabilize the region further, for example, or cross into Poland, even if it were just an errant mortar attack or something like that, then it could uh, cause an escalation into our wider spread conflict for sure. And speaking of attacks, it's been it's picked up a bit recently. We saw yet another one today with uh, a Russian attack on a humanitarian convoy. It's the second such attack that's been reported on civilians in recent days. These civilians trying to flee areas where the conflict is still very much present. The first attack happening in Zaporizhia, uh, one of the places Russia annexed from Ukraine. So what do these attacks say about Putin's overall strategy? Is he looking um, to, uh, to really ramp up this conflict at this point? I think what Putin is trying to do is cover up the fact that he is losing this conflict, has been losing this conflict, that people at home are starting to realize that he's losing this conflict by trying to escalate the rhetoric and escalate the cruelty. By tr and in doing so, his uh, thought being that it will break the, the spirit and the will of the Ukrainian people. Clearly, that's not going to happen, but it will it will break Europe's resolve, especially as we head into the winter, and you know Europe is much dependent on on Russian gas to stay warm in the winter time, to see if if their resolve is going to break as as the temperature starts to drop. So I think that there is a concerted effort. It's a psychological one where to in, engage in things like this, where you target children. They did the same thing in Afghanistan in the 80s um, with with munitions that were disguised to look like toys. So they. Um, will do just about anything to 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 achieve a goal and especially now with their, with Putin's back against the wall and looking and feeling so desperate and cornered it, i think anything uh, is possible absolutely and all the while Ukraine's president Volodymyr Zelensky is again pushing for fast track membership into NATO what does that application process look like and does Ukraine have a legitimate chance to actually join this alliance Joining NATO at this point would be construed by Putin as the kind of aggressive maneuver by NATO that it might trigger him to say, well, then everything's off the, all bets are off. I, I consider that to be the kind of act of aggression that warrants a nuclear strike, uh, be it in Ukraine, in Ukraine or elsewhere. Um, I don't think that right now there's enough stomach to have them uh, to make that move, to have them go into to become a part of NATO. Uh, it, it's a it's a very rigorous product uh, process. Everybody has to be in agreement. Uh, there already has been some disagreements uh, just recently about the inclusion of uh, other countries in the NATO by Turkey. Uh, it's it wouldn't be easy. It's not something that could happen overnight, even if something terrible happened, such as uh, an escalation of the violence um, by Russian forces that uh, it's just not going to happen overnight. Journalist, author and founder of Post Industrial Media, Carmen Gentile. Thank you, as always, for your time, sir. Thank you.